everyone is happy about South Africa moving to lockdown level one. Some critics believe allowing social gatherings actually paves the way for super spreader events at a time when the country seems to be making progress in the fight against COVID-19. Let's speak to Dr. Aslam Dasu from the Progressive Health Forum. He joins us now via Zoom. Doctor, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. It's been like three days or so since we entered lockdown level one. Of course, we've seen some super spreader events already take place at the weekend. You reckon it's not a good move. Tell us why. Hi, good afternoon, Sean. Good to be with you. Look, I, I think this is a, this is a complex situation. Um, the pandemic is, of course, very dynamic, as you, as you know. And we have had a regulatory regime around it that has unfortunately not done everything that it should have. Uh, this is not a unique situation, uh, you know, in South Africa. Other countries have gone through similar kinds of difficulties, feeling their way through it. But we have created a bit of a rod for our own back, I think, with several of these regulatory issues. And the latest announcements it gives a sense of deja vu, right? You will remember that we went to uh, level one uh, toward the end of November last year, and that was just before we experienced a huge resurgence called the second wave. Now, we also know that the variant emerged at that time, but clearly there was a great degree of complacency among the people. Once we moved to level one, it was the holiday season, and super spreader events were many. And, uh, you know, so it was not, in retrospect, surprising that we had this resurgence. With going into level one now, the rate of transmission is quite low. We understand that. But what I spoke about, you know, creating a rod for one's own back is when you have regulations that increase the number of people who can congregate, uh, when we understand that it's exactly that kind of situation that does allow for super spreader events is a little counterproductive in my view. But secondly, you know, we have to start on, on scientific premises here. Now it is a, it is accepted that and the algorithms have been worked out that any congregation greater than 10 exponentially increases the rate of spread. Here we are going to numbers like 100 and 250 and full uh, public transport and so on. So expect a resurgence soon. Um, one hopes that people will not be complacent this time and that we might be able to avoid that. But the third wave is on the cards anyway. Uh, we expect that to happen as the season changes in around May, June. Yeah, so, so Professor so Mahdi, of course, Shabir Mahdi says that he reckons this resurgence will happen at the end of May or sooner if people continue to go to these super spreader events. I want to talk to you about the vaccine rollout then and whether this buffers us at all when it comes to, you know, a third resurgence, because right now we're struggling to even inoculate the 1.25 million healthcare workers, because so far we've only received 160,000 doses. Sure. This is an entire, uh, you know, situation that on its own that, that really requires serious interrogation. You, you're, you may be aware that, of course, the government really only started moving on, on vaccine acquisition at the beginning of this year, uh, after there was a, quite a bit of pressure on, on people to get going. And uh, the president had to step up and, and, and acquire vaccine for us uh, from India using the facility of his counterpart over there. And unfortunately, we had a fateful coincidence that on the day it arrives, we find that its um, efficacy, that's the AstraZeneca vaccine's efficacy against mild and moderate illness uh, was very low. Now, we were very fortunate in that the scientists doing that trial and the, the J and J trial were able to put together a plan B for us, which we didn't have, but they did so very quickly. And we managed to get J and J vaccine into the country uh, to replace the AstraZeneca vaccine and to start the program pretty much when it was intended. However, the, the, the vaccine could only come in on, on under the, the under trial conditions, um, and, and it has to therefore be uh, used under those conditions. Hence, there's a very slow 
rollout. As you say, only 160,000 doses have arrived, and these are arriving in batches of 80,000 until we reach about 500,000. They're single dose, so they completely replace the 1 million double dose AstraZeneca vaccine. However, it's going to take us longer to get there. And this is, uh, this is now, unfortunately, our reality. We are not going to be able to reach the targets, the very ambitious targets that were put out initially to vaccinate some 40 million South Africans by the end of this year. We have no certainty of supply of either J&J or Pfizer or the others that the government has spoken about, even though we understand that an agreement with J&J has been reached for two and a half million doses next month and, and then, you know, uh, ratcheting up. But we live in a state of uncertainty here. Vaccine supply globally is very, very tenuous because of the huge demand. We have heard that J&J also had manufacturing hitches this weekend, and that might impact on when doses will be available to us. So, you know, a mass inoculation program requires a certainty of supply. Otherwise, we're going to do it in fits and stops. So there's going to be no protection against a third resurgence or a third wave in this situation. So very quickly, because I've run out of time, you know, today the tourism minister is saying that South Africa is ready to welcome international tourists back into the country, and she reckons it will actually be safe. Is that the right step? Because we've already allowed super spreader events to take place given the new restrictions. And now we're saying to foreigners, actually, you can also come back to the country. Is that going to compound the issue and cause more infections? No, that's unlikely. And, uh, and for a very simple reason. You see, I mean, I think international travelers come into a very well-organized, mitigated environment. Um, they have to get tested before. They can get tested here. And they are usually people with means um, who can be quarantined quite easily and, and also can be tracked quite easily. So as a, a, I, would, I would therefore support the idea that we open up international tourism uh, simply for economic reasons at this point. Clearly, when a resurgence starts, uh, as it must in the future, then, of course, we'll need to revisit that. But as we would need to revisit a number of... of, of regulations that has allowed for for increased uh, congregations, for uh, increased operating times for businesses, etc. Unfortunately, uh, because we face this rather uh, difficult situation with very blunt instruments, this is going to have knock-on effects. But for now, I think that we are probably a safe environment for international tourists to arrive, and I think very vital uh, economic support to that sector.